Hello and welcome to Enchantment of Eternity's review for The Expanse Season 4, Episode 4, Retrograde. Uh, this video is part of a series of videos where I review episodes of The Expanse. So I'll have to start with a spoiler warning for The Expanse up to Season 4, Episode 4. If you haven't seen up to this point, you may not want to watch this video, otherwise some things will be spoiled for you. However, if you have not seen Beyond Episode 4, not to worry, there will be no spoilers beyond Episode 4. Uh, so please keep that the case in the comment section as well. Thank you very much. Anywho, um, so this is a, yeah, pretty good episode. Again, it, it sort of ramps up the tension. Uh, things are starting to go ahead. It was, it was a fairly exciting episode. Uh, so let's start with Illus, where things start uh, pretty bang up, where we continued last time when Murchie, uh just killed a shitload of people, but he's after uh, Lucia as well, or Lucia, because he knows from his spying that she was also involved in uh, the sabotage that destroyed his ship and killed uh, 23 of his people, so his solution is just to find her and kill her, and Naomi, of course, is not okay with that, and so she, Naomi tries to hide her, and uh, Amos... Uh, steps in and attacks them to, in order to buy Amy and Lucia time to escape, which I thought was a nice touch. That Amos is willing to do that. That he wasn't, he knew he couldn't take the, all the men on himself, but it was, wasn't that wasn't the point. The point was to buy time uh, for Naomi, and Amos ends up getting uh, captured and held uh, handcuffs and held to the bay in his. Uh, well, I was going to say girlfriend, but really, as he calls it, the girl that he's fucking, <laughs> um, is the one holding him down and saying, please don't resist, I'd really rather not shoot you. And she keeps saying this, like, why you keep doing this? They're going to shoot you. And he's like, eh, yeah, well, fine, you know, being tough on Amos, but really, he's, he is a bit out, outmatched, outnumbered here in this case. So, Naomi calls for Holden for help to, um, to help get, uh, Lucia back to the ship. And Holden, of course, he's freaked out over the proto molecule and he fires a missile at the pillar to try to get it to shake into the ground. And he's more focused on that. And then, uh, he gets this call. He's like, oh yeah, Mercury's going around killing people and he's trying to kill. Lucia and Na Naomi's not going to allow that, so now Naomi's in danger. So Holden, true to his character, does something very stupid. I mean, he's not really a strategically thinking guy. He calls um, Murtry and tells him not to hurt Naomi, which is dumb because Murtry didn't know Naomi was with Lucia, and now he does. This is a really stupid thing of him to do. And so he also that also tells him that they're headed to the Rosinate. So hold on that was kind of an idiot here. He kinda of ruined the situation. Uh, made things worse for Naomi by doing this. But you know, he's the kind of guy you think he can solve everything by talking, but with uh, someone like Murtry, talking's really not gonna be the uh, right solution, unfortunately. Uh, so we get a pretty interesting uh, chase scene, and it's really intense because Naomi is starting to succumb to uh, the gravity, and yeah, she has a ticking clock. She needs to get off the planet, and she's starting to feel really sick. And when no uh, Holden notices this, when she talks to her, Alex has to come clean to him about it, and. Um, and then, of course, Lucia uh, Lucia gets uh, cornered by Murtry, and he starts shooting at her, and he shoots her, so she's shot, she's injured, and Naomi is feeling the weight of the gravity, so they're screwed. But Naomi gets, uh, manages to operate the uh, Resonate's uh, weapons, and then starts shooting at Murtry and his men, which I thought was a really cool sequence. And then uh, that gives Holden enough time to show up, rescue her, take her back to the Rosnate, and then the Rosnate, of course, has to go into orbit in order to save Naomi because she can't be down the gravity well any longer. Uh, and they take Lu uh, Lucia with him uh, to keep her safe. And Lucia, by the way, admits 
that she did in fact play a part in destroying the ship, although she didn't. She planned the bomb on the platform. She didn't uh, know that it would kill so many people, but uh, and she obviously feels really guilty about it. But uh, she was a part of it and she admitted it. But Naomi is real, still willing to protect her and still say, "Look, we'll f sort that out later." Whatever she did, she doesn't deserve a death sentence, which is what Murtry is trying to do. And the whole thing clearly finds that unacceptable. So the Rosinante takes off, but Holden stays behind. And I guess he's playing the VIP card, because everyone knows that he's Alvisarello's personal emissary. So to kill him or arrest him would uh, not be a very wise career move. Uh, so he's using that to his advantage, so he just goes up to Murtry and just punches him in the face and tells him that he's done here. Now, we still have six episodes left, so I think it's a good bet to say that he's not done here, but maybe temporarily he is. We'll have to see how he handles Holden's basically trying to uh, say he had no longer is in charge and no longer has authority. It's also interesting to note that Murtry called for uh, Fayez on the ship for help, but Fayez was not very willing to do that, and he came up with the excuses, oh, we're going to the dark side of the planet, sorry, and then he gives the screen the middle finger, I love that. <laughs> but Fayez did mention that Murtry has security on the ship, and that they locked down the communications to Earth, so that could complicate things, that's Murtry not only has control of his men on the ground, but also his men on the ship, on the Edward Israel in orbit, so maybe that could complicate matters a bit. Uh, meanwhile, LV is still worried about like all the earthquakes and all the bullshit that's happening with the planet, and trying to get Fias's help uh, to do that, and he noticed some weird energy coming from a uh, string of islands on the other side of the planet. Ooh, dangerous stuff are happening. Anyway, um, so let me go over to uh, Bobby Draper's storyline. Uh, yeah, things take an interesting turn. It's really showing how fucking corrupt Mars is and how fucked the situation is. She meets up with that dude again. They go to a bar, and they're, she's talk, they're talking about how there was never anyone unemployed, but now there's lines filled with unemployed people. And it's kind of a sign of the times. Um, just sort of touch on this more. Um, you know, Marco in the other storyline mentions that it has to do with the uh, the war between Earth and Mars and took its toll on Mars. But I don't know, in the novels, and I think it's kind of implied here as well, it has more to do with the fact people want to, there's all these um, planets right from the taking beyond the ring gate. And so they'd rather go colonize them then uh, go through all the effort to terraform Mars. And that makes sense. Now, at the moment, they're still locked down. Nobody's actually colonizing anything. But a lot of people are preparing to, as we know. So I think people just lost interest in Mars, and that's why this economy is uh, falling apart. And so we see that here. And, when, and it's a sign of how bad things on Mars when Draper goes to her superior and uh, confesses the crime and he just tries to take advantage of that and hey let's set up our own little market keep doing that and cut me in on it uh, because money's tight <laughs> it just shows how bad the economy is of course Draper has too much integrity to do that so she refuses and because of that and then she goes out and gets really drunk and yells at her nephew but because of that, uh, she gets turned in uh, by her supervisor, and she gets arrested. And the only person she has to turn to is that asshole guy from 24, and say, "Look, I'll, I'll, you offer me a job, I'll take it." And he gives it to her. Uh, but he says, "Since you don't work at the docks, you have to work for me full time." So basically, hiring her has an evil henchman. I am, you know, I don't know because I haven't read this short story. This is based on even if this is staying true to it, which I have no idea. So this is a wild guess, but I don't think Bobby's being sincere. I think she's going undercover. I think she's going to go work for him as a way to expose them and find out what's happening because there's obviously there's something bigger going on. 
So, uh, Avasarala, we don't get much in, that, in this episode, just the one scene where she yells at Holden and like, records the message saying, What the f- Oh, thank you so much. I sent you there as an emissary to, to, uh, to keep my eyes out and, and, and to, uh, be my eyes and ears and see what's going on in Ellis, but you haven't contacted me on all. So, if you don't mind, could you kindly please just contact me and let me know what the fuck is going on? <laughs> <laughs> and she didn't say quite like that, but that's basically what I got out of it. And I love that. It was I love Avasara. Some people are like, oh, uh, it's not so good that she's cursing all the time now. But honestly, like I didn't think she was cursing. This is much more cursing than it was before. Because if you watch, like I watch these in New Zealand, and if you watch the first three seasons, I mean the first three seasons. Yeah, sorry, the first three seasons I watched in New Zealand, and if you watch them on Amazon now, there is still a lot of cursing. It's just when you watch it on the Sci-Fi Channel when it first came out, they bleeped the cursing out, or they changed it to lesser offense, less offensive swear words, like instead of saying fuck, she'll say hell, or whatever. Uh, but if you watch the original three seasons on Amazon now, you'll see the original intent of she says fuck all the time. So I actually, and I'll, even the producers talk about, oh, this season's better because she gets to say fuck a lot more. Seems the same to me so far. Maybe it gets worse later on, but I don't know because I'm more used to watching the uncensored versions. Of course, the censored versions on sci-fi always piss me the fuck off when she was saying, oh, <laughs> when she was saying, oh, to hell with your sorries. No, she's saying, fuck your sorries. But anyway, <laughs> it is good to not have to deal with that anymore, I will say. Uh, but anyway... Uh, let's talk about Drummer and Ashford. This is a pretty interesting storyline. They actually, actually capture Marco and Norris and they have, uh, Drummer has a nice little conversation about Naomi and he's trying to say like, oh, it wasn't, you know, trying to be like she's lying or she has her information wrong that she didn't, he didn't actually steal her son away, but of course he did. And because we can tell this is not a very nice guy, um, because he's, uh, attacking Innocent um, colony ships and claiming that it's for the good of the belt, that they're taking valuable resources from the belt. And I love the little gambit that Ashford and Drummer have because Marco's ship comes to get him back and their ship is no match for his. So they make they act like, oh no, we're defenseless, oh no. And then they get it so Ashford and Marco are alone. And Marco, of course, tries to turn Ashford, and Ashford pretends to go along with it to get information. But then Marco kind of catches on to this, and he's like, wait a second, how come no one else is here? And when Ashford just keeps asking, so what next? He really catches on, he's like, nah, I'm not saying anything else until, until I'm back on my ship. So then Ashford has to call everyone back in and be like, alright, we tried. I mean, they did get some information from him. I don't think they should... I mean, he did give some things away. Like, he hinted at things, but of course he didn't reveal everything. But it turns out that Drummer and Ashford were not just that, but they were playing him by pretending they were defenseless, and really they had a bunch of Belter ships, uh, other factions that they teamed up with in order to take uh, Marco's ship on, so they had to... Uh, Marco's ship had to flee in the superior and force and so they put him on trial and he gets to talk and Ashford's like oh shut the fuck up but the other leader faction leaders like no 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 I want to hear what he has to say and of course his very charismatic it shows this it's a very good portrayal of him it shows how his uh uh how charismatic he is is why he has so much power and that he's able to win over two of the faction leaders and it's funny because drummer still they still had a majority vote because one of the faction leaders said kill him and of course ashford said kill him so drummer could have been the side and vote and said yes kill him but she said no and that surprised me i was like why um i was like they better explain this in the next scene and they do uh, sure enough, which I was very thankful for, <laughs> like, because Ashford's like, oh no, he, you know, his chemistry, he convinced even you, she's like, no, it's not what happened, is that because I knew those two factions were so convinced by him, that if we killed him, we would lose them, and it would cause a civil war within the belt, 
and she was trying to avoid that. So it shows the very precarious situation because the end of season three showed that the OPA were a new nation state and how united they were. But this shows just how they're made up of all these different factions. Because if you think of it in this other video, I've mentioned this, the asteroid belt is fucking huge. So it's not like these these factions are like right next to each other. It's very, very far apart. So they're just united under the common cause of, you know, freeing the belt and fighting off the inners who are uh, oppressing them. But when things get a bit more murky and complicated, that, that very uneasy alliance of all these totally different and separate factions becomes hard to maintain. And I love... Uh, how that's portrayed. And again, I, I still have to say I love this storyline because this is a lot of intricate political setup we did not get in the books. And so I think this show's doing a great job. And plus, also, I love the fact that it's not entirely focused on Illus the way the books were. And we do get these other things like the Bobby stuff and this stuff. I think still really enjoying that. Uh, <coughs> so anyway, my rating uh, for Retrograde out of 10 is an 8. Extremely good. Really exciting episode. Uh, Saturn raised the stakes. Some of the Marco stuff dragged a little bit for me, but for the most part, is uh, yeah, this is a really good uh, raising the stakes episode, uh, which plays out very well. So that's it uh, for my review uh, for The Expanse. Uh, season 4, Episode 4. I will be back shortly for my book to show comparison for this episode and next week shall return for my review for episode 5. So thanks so much for watching. Be sure to check out my channel as I do many more reviews on The Expanse and also covering other shows like Star Trek and more. So be sure to subscribe uh, so you can keep up with all of that. And thanks a lot for watching.